call the meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's see. I'm aware of one change to our agenda be the deletion of item 4C, the minutes from the October 9th <coughs> meeting. Any other changes or additions? Need a motion? To approve as uh, modified second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Special appearances. Employee of the quarter, Mr. David. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm pleased to uh, read uh, about our employee of the quarter. Uh, the employee of the quarter for the fourth quarter 2018. Our employee of the quarter has provided Orange County with dedicated service since February 2016 and was nominated by her supervisor. Since the beginning of her tenure, this employee has been an integral part of her department. She has an unvarying can-do positive attitude and demeanor and a never-ending determination to task. Always willing to lend a helping hand, she is the first to step up to, to the plate. She arrives early every morning takes on additional tasks as needed, and volunteer, volunteers her time to ensure office coverage. This employee continues to make a positive contribution to the County of Orange. Therefore, it is with great pleasure, Mr. Chairman, that I present to the Board our Employee of the Quarter, Kathy Weaver, Unit Support Staff with the Extension Office. <laughs> And we have a resolution of recognition that Mr. Frame is going to present. Chairman, Orange County Board of Supervisors. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, I want to just say this, and I have to say this to the board, too. When I was serving a church in Silver Spring, Maryland, when we drove down here, the first place that I went to, even before I went to Lake of the Woods, was the one in this library. I wanted to know what the library system was like. Now, it was card catalog at that time, but I've watched the improvements and some of the key staff are here. And I want to thank them, but to thank you that you put the money where I think it should be, and that is with the public libraries. And you've got three great libraries as far as a part of the whole system. But thank you, sir. Very nice. Lee, again, thank you. Uh, Okay, consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. New business, Town of Orange lease of right of way use agreement. Mr. David, are you leading that conversation? Yes, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get it started. How's All right. that? I know the county attorney uh, <coughs> has some additions. Uh, gentlemen, as you know, we're, the private project has been underway now for some time. Um, the town of Orange has required the board and the school board to enter into agreement with town council, essentially uh, allowing uh, this project to go into the right of way uh, within the town. Um, I've got plan sheets here that represent where the locations are, but this agreement essentially is a, 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 a the result of uh, work that Supervisors Goodwin and Johnson did with two of the town's representatives. Uh, this document has been uh, under quite a bit of review, revisions, uh, even up until prior to, to today for the meeting. Uh, let me just speak to uh, the document in its totality is what the board has previously seen, uh, uh, certainly in communication from the county attorney as, as attorney client. But, um, but there is two uh, sections of the, uh, of the uh, agreement that I'd like to speak to that have been changed and, and, and okayed by the town, or one was okayed by the town and a change as a result of the town's direction. Let me speak first to the bonding requirement. There's a surety requirement in section, uh, gosh, Tom, I forgot what that section is. 8.3. 8.3 that required the Board of Supervisors to perform post performance surety uh, along with the contractor. Um, we went and tried to obtain a performance bond just like any business would uh, from Vacorp. That would be our, our go-to uh, folks to do that. In that, and the county attorney can speak to this, there's a requirement for us to indemnify uh, Vacorp, the board, uh, the town council, and as the town, as the county attorney tells, the board cannot indemnify. That's contrary to the case law and I think statutory law. And so I uh, communicated that back to the town manager Friday and said there just, while there was a willingness to fulfill the agreement, we couldn't get the performance bond required by the town. And I offered uh, to post $100,000 cash, which would then be available to them to, to use. The town manager agreed that that was an acceptable approach. So there's a, an aven, uh, amendment revision to section point 8.3 that goes through um, the process that they would go to call in uh, some amount up to $100,000 for performance. And I'll let the county attorney go through that. Let me dispense with the second item uh, that's been changed that we verified. There was a requirement for us to have certain insurance coverage and naming the town of Orange as an additional insurer. This was for the contractor and for the <coughs> county. Uh, the town manager had specified certain limits on primary and excess coverages. It turns out that our primary coverages weren't as high as what he expected, but our excess coverage, when added to the primary, certainly exceeded the coverage that he had stipulated. Uh, we have sent the certificates of insurance, both the um, contractors and the counties from Vacorp to the town manager, and he's accepted those as to being sufficient to meet 
uh, their, insur their uh, insurance requirements. So we've dispensed with that issue. That issue has been resolved. The, uh, the bonding issue, I think Tom had drafted some, some changes to this section. Yeah, what, I, what I did is I actually took the town's agreement and I deleted out there 8.3 with bonding because we can't, state law says we cannot indemnify and a bonding company won't issue us in a, a bond without an indemnity agreement. And so I took out 8.3 and inserted a new 8.3. On the very back of your form, it, it may have been on the front of your form, is the redlined version of what I changed. Um, that we did not have time to run this by the town. I added the language uh, at the end of that 8.3. If they want to call that $100,000 we're going to keep that they need to follow state code, which is 15.2-1243, which is the procedure for making a claim against the county. And so I just inserted what is the state law way to make a claim against the county and against that cash. But uh, the, the town has not seen this and has not signed off on it. And I'll just underscore the town manager agreed in principle. He does it. There's no need for us to deposit $100,000 for the town as long as we had the $100,000 available. And I'll certainly represent to you all that we would have $100,000 available. Uh, that was satisfactory to him to satisfy the bonding. I, I noticed that the uh, school board uh, school board chairman, it would be a signature to this. Have, have they been, has she or the school board been in the, involved in this at all? They're, they're, they understand and are... They've, they've gotten earlier versions. They haven't gotten this version, but since the, the dollars and the insurance were coming through the, the county, they had deferred that. I've talked to Dr. Snead, and they're going to take this up next Monday. Um, I'm going to be out of town on Monday, but uh, Mr. Goodwin is going to be be there at the school board okay. meeting. All right. So they're they're aware that they're they're a party to this as well in order yeah, to, that, to. Oh, oh yeah. yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. the, the chairman, she was at uh, the meeting on Monday night last Monday. Oh, they okay. Discussed this, okay. So. Good. All right. Okay. Um, so this is prepared for us to. Take All action. you would need is a motion authorizing your signature. <coughs> so moved. Seconded. Any further discussion? As revised. As revised. Well, this, yeah, this version here. Okay. Thank you. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I certainly want to thank Mr. Johnson. Mr. Yeah, thank you guys. You put a lot of effort in getting us to this point. <coughs> we got there. It's so. almost like buying land out of <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Buying land. <laughs> the public safety board. That's an interesting comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Very analogous. Okay. A word of contract for veterinary services. Mr. Hildebrandt. Oh. <laughs> oh. So that, that button I have up here for your chair worked, I see. Taking care of that. Well, it has your name, but... Uh, I think it's my name because Stephanie couldn't be here. I believe I remember that. That's name. a good reason. So, for you. Uh, That's I, why I, a bunch of them there with your name. Yeah, yeah you, you get get comfortable. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to wake up. <laughs> um, you cup of coffee? No, I'll drink coffee, thank you. Uh, I was going to throw it at you. <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't offering. <laughs> so I was I was involved on the uh, procurement of the veterinary services, and we only had two offers. We we, we vetted both of those, and um, would like to enter in contract with those with those two firms. I, I, we we reached out to all the vets in the community you know, well in advance, but most chose not to uh, respond to. How do we order services under that under the contract? Do you is this a, on a is it on call or is it as needed or what what is it's, I, a, it's as needed and in both cases they provided their fees. So okay. they, we have a schedule of their fees. Okay. I asked the question because I noticed we were awarding to both, uh, and I assume there was some ordering procedure that we would go through. So these the, right. so we're. We, we chose, there were two of them that applied, and we picked both of them. Correct. And, and to be honest, we'd like to have more options than two, because there are times when things occur, especially with animal control, that 
Sure. It's the middle of the night or a Sunday afternoon. It's always better to have more uh, resources available, but we'll make this work. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And that's unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Do uh, you want to do the next one? Sure. What's the next one? I thought we were doing no, both of them. I'm sorry. I, I thought you put them together. <laughs> no, you got them separate. Correct. Because there were two RFPs. So, so the one that you just uh, addressed was for veterinary services, and the other one was for facility, uh, facility supervising services. Um, and we only had one respondent to that. That's Dr. Jacobson, who's been performing that in the past. Um, so we just want to continue with that. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Any, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 You know. Okay. You may leave for a while, at least. Yeah. All right. Uh, word of contract for retail and visitor recruitment solutions. Mr. David. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, we uh, received a uh, solicitation from a, a qualified offeror for this, uh, 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 I guess, uh, project that's being undertaken by Economic Development and Tourism. Uh, and on September 11th, you saw uh, a proposal uh, by this firm to do these services. Um, what happened was a, when uh, further review by Stephanie and, and the way that our procurement uh, policy works, we felt uh, it was we were more comfortable, and certainly Stephanie guided us to that comfort level, that we would need to go through a procurement rather than awarding this as, as a sole source. So what we did was we, we stepped back and went through a procurement. There was only one firm that submitted. Uh, it was Buxton. Uh, everything is in order. There, it's a one-year contract with uh, other uh, four other optional years if we proceed to continue with them. So uh, the funding's in place. Uh, I know uh, everybody in tourism and economic development is excited to get going on this, so we recommend that you all uh, accept this contract with one year term and four additional one year renewals. And Brian, could you could you tell us, uh, kind of refresh <coughs> our memory in, in 90 seconds, what we're going to get for this? Yes, sir. What they're going to do is uh, data analytics on uh, the Germana Wilderness area and the retail trade area. And what they're going to do is to get us the data needed to be able to develop a retail recruitment strategy that we would actually go and, and try to recruit, uh, approach uh, national uh, uh, food and hospitality retailers to look at locating in the Germana Wilderness area uh, because of the market potential there, the, the number of people, the number of vehicles, the number of household income. The tourism piece of this is being able to analyze where our tourists are coming from by down to the zip code and then then uh, to our businesses and then Lori and the tourism businesses will be able to target their marketing to specific geographic areas that are either coming here to visit or geographic areas that resemble our our tourists that are coming here now. It's 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 a way of using analytics and, and data to, to help with our recruitment and uh, for economic development and for tourism. And how are we going to um, judge the, the success of this project? The success will be uh, our ability to move on a year-over-year -year basis for tourism, increasing the tourism accounts and where they're coming from. And then on the uh, retail recruitment that we're able to land, just like uh, industrial recruitment, actual businesses to open up in, in, in the Germania Wilderness area. There's also a component, I don't want to leave this out, there's also a component here for small uh, uh, business here in Orange and Gordonsville to use these data analytics to be able to know where their customers are coming from in the area, and we want to, want to make that available to small businesses here to be able to help with their marketing and trying to reach more customers. Since there, the proposal here is that there's a, a one-year contract with options, are you saying we should be able to judge the performance or, or the returns, if you will, on an annual basis as, yes, sir. as to whether or not to continue? Yes, sir. And just a comment that I've gotten a number of phone calls 
conversations about. I realize it's probably the appropriate verbiage for what we've advertised for, but I've had numerous people say, oh, great, we're paying to have somebody else do economic development and tourism's jobs for them. I just I understood. I, I've uh, received fair. numerous calls about that, yeah. and I've had to explain to people exactly what it was. So um, I don't know if there was better verbiage for it or not, but uh, a lot of people had comments for me. Right. And I would agree that that doesn't lend itself to, to what it really is. Yeah. So. <clears throat> well, I'll be interested a year from now to, to see uh, what we've gotten for our 65000 Certainly not opposed to, um, you know, getting some ideas on on um, the uh, the customer base that we have and the vehicle, getting all that down. I'm not sure how that costs sixty five thousand. Uh, I'm I'm a lot less enthusiastic about the idea that we're gonna we're gonna see where our tourists are coming from. I mean, uh, I, I'm not sure what we're supposed to do with that. Are we? I mean. If we're getting tourists from, <clears throat> if we're getting tourists from Missouri but not from Kansas, does that mean we're gonna we're gonna start marketing to Kansas, or are we gonna start marketing to Missouri? Um, so wh where do, what do we really what do we really get? I mean, I, I'm not sure where tourists are coming from. What that why we even want to know that? Because then we can do marketing to attract them and others from their area. It's about trying to get the inbound visitors here. Rather than, but don't we want to do marketing to the places we're not getting tourists from? Well, this this this. And, and so, wouldn't that be like everywhere? Well, <laughs> no. Nah, it, 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 I mean, I, I just I, to yeah. me, it's I think it's a waste of time. I think it's, I, it's not a waste. Of, I think it's a waste of money. Okay. Very frankly, I, I just I I think it's good to know again. I think to know what we've got on the ground and and, and to the extent we want to try to do retail marketing. Which I think is a little bit of a dicey prospect in and of itself, um, but and and I think to the extent we can get uh, information that local businesses who are already here uh, can use, I think that's great. But we should uh, be able to hear that from back from the local businesses what information they're getting and to what value it is. Well, and, and we should be able to. I assume there'll be some kind of of um, of, uh, of, of it would be reducible down to. <laughs> Uh, a few sheets of paper um, in terms of, of what uh, um, you know what information they have uh, in that regard. Yeah, I mean but I, just knowing where our tourism is coming from, I, I, that that to me is there's almost zero value in that because it's not. Maybe if we knew who they are, are they young people? Are they old people? Are they wealthy people? Are they middle income people? And, um, but knowing they're coming from Delaware instead of Maryland, I'm not sure that matters because we've got. Mr. Johnson, I didn't do it in service. What you just, the profile that you just said, <clears throat> age, income, education level, and all that, that's what these analytics do. It's not just where they're coming from. Okay. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't make that part of the question. But I think then how we use that, I mean, having the information is step one using it is step two and again I don't know how you use it except for to me the smarter way of using it is, is to go to the places that you're sort of weak and, and, and well if you have the you're already doing well with cohort a then you probably need to work on cohort B I, I see the economic development side of it much more than I do the tourism yeah. One of the things on the tourism is that they'll be able to do you know, this market segmentation. Here's the profile, age, income, geography, location. Um, and then they'll be able to also analyze other potential markets where people, visitors could come from that they're not coming from now necessarily and allow us to also start targeting those markets as well. Well, I'll be interested a year from now to, to, to be able to look at that and see what what we learned and how we're using it. Uh, as it will I think the, I think you there <laughs> I'm I think not people alone. have the same curiosity. I'm not alone. Yes, you're not <laughs> alone. And, and and frankly I when I saw that I was aware that we were having discussions about doing this but 
when I saw that we're going to do it five uh, years in a row, that was that made me <laughs> question about it. if you collect that data once, you know, I'm not sure that we're in a position to use a whole new round of data every year for the next five years. So the fact that it's set up as an option is is a good thing. The, the tourism data is just a one year. Effort. The, the retail recruitment is, is it could be an ongoing thing, but we have to judge the success of it after the so it's only fifteen thousand for the uh, tourists. <laughs> Motion to approve. <laughs> is there a second? <laughs> second. Any, any further discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. I suppose. Yeah, I, I heard I heard a I heard a response. <laughs> I heard it I'll call it unanimous. I'll, I'll call it unanimous. I heard somebody from Missouri say shiny. Yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any old business? Department Director of Constitutional Officer Report. Oh, uh, Sorry. I don't know if this would be old business or not, but okay. I'm going to bring it up. Um, as I brought up a number of years ago about reassessment and us hiring our own in house reassessment. We're supposed uh, to have a work session on that topic at some point. Yes, and it was just reaffirmed to me today. I happened to be down um, in the Lake of the Woods and ran across one of our contractors' employees. Uh, less than stellar. Less than stellar. Yeah. I'll leave it there. So I just want to make sure that under the old business that we do have a work session and start moving forward with uh, in-house. Yeah. Okay. The people before that were even less, less than stellar. So, <laughs> you, you mean we've made progress? Uh, okay. <laughs> less than stellar <laughs> instead of less than less than stellar. Yeah. I was being very kind. I could tell you were struggling too. <laughs> okay, county attorney's report. No report, Mr. Okay. Chair. Okay. Administrator's report. We have legislative priorities for 19, which we have in a package, and I guess we're going to. Talk about those a little bit uh, in our meeting next <coughs> month. Right. I, Anything I, you want to you know, highlight today? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I, I, I think I've just teed this up where this is where you all are. If you want to add, subtract um, on it, you can today. My, uh, I guess my, my uh, recommendation would be if, uh, just take it under advisement, and I'll have it on the uh, November agenda, <coughs> and then you would adopt it, and then we would distribute it to the our, uh, Senator and Delegate okay. in Vaco. All right. Okay, Madison Garden Subdivision CDBG yes, sir. planning grant. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, as you know, back in May, you authorized us to submit a, a planning grant application to uh, the Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development. I'm pleased to report that we were awarded the planning grant, uh, and I included the letter from uh, housing and community development uh, uh, contact for us. Um, what we're going to do from here is we uh, are working with the uh, regional commission, uh, Patrick Monty and his staff, particularly Patrick, who's been sent our, our technical advisor so to, and support person on this. Uh, we're going to be convening a meeting of the stakeholders that uh, would be Ms. Bell and I, I forget the other but Ms. Bell, who's been instrumental in getting the, I guess, the spark plug for this going, uh, together along with uh, engineers and things to kick this off with the state. We, I think we're going to be doing that in the next week or two. Once that's started, then a preliminary engineering report will actually be produced. That's what this planning grant is, is being paid for, uh, is paying for. And then that will assess the wastewater extension to, to this neighborhood, uh, the actual construction costs and everything. That will be brought back to you all when it's, when it's done. I don't have an idea how many, how long this will take, but um, what we're trying to do is to get into the queue of the next round if everything in this board is agreeable and we can make the numbers work uh, for the next round of construction grants from the CDBG program, which applications are from January through March 30th of next year. So uh, this is coming a little fast, but, but we still have plenty of time on this. So. And at this point, uh, it still looks like a pretty viable project. And we have uh, John Cooley of the town has represented the town since this is town water that would, I mean, excuse me, town sewer that would extend it from the industrial plant. And that's 
I think I read that Draper Aiden is going to do the analysis. Is that yes, sir? That correct? Yes, they're going to do the preliminary engineering report. They're under our continuing services contract. Okay. All right. Any questions about that? Okay. Board comment. Any board comment? Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Okay. My, mine's not much. Uh, of course, since we've already discussed the agreement, uh, I was at the town meeting on last Monday and they've approved it as it was to form before we changed the form but so we'll see how that goes the only other thing that was really any interest was that they're planning to change the name of two streets north of uh, um, uh, north of Spicer's Mill uh, one would be Keen and uh, Bellevue would become North Street and the other would be Radney Road would become Round Hill Drive I guess they have the right to oh, do that post office yeah. on that. <laughs> a lot, a lot of people. A lot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, real quick, uh, Mr. Frame and I met yesterday uh, down at Lake of the Woods um, regarding a interest in controlling, uh, for lack of a better term, controlling the property rights of property owners outside Lake of the Woods. Uh, it was basically <laughs> what the meeting was called for, and by the time it was done, uh, it was determined that probably the best thing forward was to look at uh, possible grants for property owners within Lake of the Woods to control stormwater runoff from their property. Mm. In doing so, I contacted uh, Patrick Monty at the Regional Commission this morning. Uh, he said he'd be very happy to put together a working group uh, and provide the uh, organizations that could assist these people within the lake uh, for the grant process. And I just wanted to make sure that I covered that in case you heard any any rumors of any sort and what our meeting covered and where it ended up. So uh, there was there was one member of their board of uh, directors <coughs> felt that uh, because people upstream were contributing pollutants that uh, would flow into the lake that uh, that we had some right to deal with that and uh, recognizing that as long as they were complying with the law which when a bar shits in the woods uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> uh, it, it happens and that kind of stuff you're not going to stop I mean it was it was a matter of educating uh, some board members primarily and it took 10 of us. Uh, a little bit of that here. <laughs> yes. Well, but it yeah, took so 10 of us about an hour and a half to do that. I just wanted to give you an update so in case you should hear any rumblings from anyone. That was uh, the meeting that we had, and that's the outcome of it. So uh, I spoke to that board member today. They were extremely happy and uh, glad that we could do something. Uh, well, well, it's interesting. I, I wouldn't be surprised we hear from her again. Oh, I wouldn't either. I'm just, uh, and that was today's status. It, it, it's interesting you say that. I, I just received the other day a, a report. Uh, it's a Chesapeake Bay Foundation report that they put out quarterly. And for the first time I I ever saw it, at least, it, I, and I think it's the first time they've ever done it, they were uh, identifying sources of, of pollution into the bay. And for the first time, they acknowledge that 25% of the pollutants come from, quote, natural sources, <laughs> yeah. including those bears you were referring to and other sources. I mean, yep. think about that number. You know, they're, they're squeezing us dealing in, in single-digit percentage sources, and here they're, they're, they finally come around to recognizing that at least a quarter are things that we... Presumably have nothing are, to do with. Or seasonal, like the geese. You know, so. Oh, yeah. So. Funny, it's a big number. Funny that you should mention bears. I didn't. He did. <laughs> um, because uh, we apparently have a bear out in Barbersville who's smarter than the average bear. And uh, Kurt can tell you all about him. Um, he apparently walked up in broad daylight at the convenience center recently, uh, stood up, reached into the 
compactor, pulled out a bag of garbage, and went off into the woods with it. Um, I understand that the Sheriff's Department has a good description of the bear and <laughs> look out for it. <laughs> have a warrant out for it. You're going to get him for polluting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the fee is for the fine is for that. <laughs> yeah, pass the buck. <laughs> I, I, used, I used to beat one of those. So <laughs> All right. Any uh, other any other board comment? Oh, oh I do have one. I actually uh, Sunday I was uh, I attended the 160th uh, anniversary celebration for Mount Zion Baptist Church, and uh, it was quite had a, quite a nice. Uh, Festival there and in uh, celebration, the Congressman Brat had uh, 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 had the Congress do a resolution uh, acknowledging that, which was also presented, and they were uh, very thankful to this board for recognizing their 160th year. And uh, they had a, a guest minister, a guest uh, pastor, I guess as they call it, that was uh, quite a quite a lively uh, sermon. I, I, you know. It's, there's no chance of falling asleep in church when, when that guy's around. He was really good. So it was, uh, anyway, they, they were appreciative of our recognition of their 160 years. So. Did you have something, Mark? No. Did you have more comment? No. I'm the bear. Uh, uh, just the bear, okay. I, okay. Bear, I, I couldn't oh. bear to say anything else. Uh, any any uh, questions on the information items? Okay, appointments to boards and committees. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to uh, reappoint uh, Marcia Bros for another term on the Rappahannock Rapid and Community Services Board. Okay. I would also like to appoint Donald Lundry uh, to replace uh, uh, Mr. Rosheim on the Library Board. Okay. Any others? Uh, yeah, I'd like to go ahead and still shoot me, but uh, <coughs> Elizabeth Ross uh, to another term on the uh, Economic Development Authority. Okay. All right. Any others? All right. All in favor of those appointments, say aye. 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 I, I do have a question before you move on, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, number one, what's going on with FAPT and all that since everybody suddenly resigned? Um, that I find most interesting and I had asked uh, on the youth commission before on what, what really they do and, and do we have to have that and, yes sir uh, we we uh, we we're starting the process with uh, we've let uh, Alicia know and we it was too quick of a turnaround for us to get something to you all tonight and then we got the November at Lake of the Woods so if it's okay I mean we, we can get a, in, I'll get you some information in the interim, uh, but we were going to come back in, in December if, if, if that makes sense. <coughs> on the Youth Commission, you're talking Yeah, with the goal of ultimately, perhaps on the Youth Commission, having it more community interest and not necessarily coming through the, the board appointment. I think that's where you're going, Mr. Gordon. Well, uh, I mean, I just wondered actually how we got there. Is it a requirement or is it something we created or a past board created? And I, you lost me a little bit. What's the relevance of the Lake of the Woods meeting? I, I don't just having Alicia come out to that meeting and, and that type of business. I mean, mm -hmm. I was just okay. yeah. I, I don't I don't need to know specifically on that date. I just following up on on the question. Well, uh, Donna Merriman's uh, just moving out of the area. That's why she's resigned. Is it, is it a, a commission that we need? Well, that was uh, that was the question as to right. what That's what does the uh, board do, and what does the commission do? What do their function? Yeah, I think the uh, question was, is it a requirement? Uh, that's so. I, that should be a somebody should be able to answer that very quickly. How, how about I I do this? Uh, let me get the information from Alicia. I'll just send that out by email. That's fine. That 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 way we were going to staff up or gear up for a presentation and discussion with the board. I, I don't need a big bono thing. I just wondered, is it a requirement? 
Okay. What what actually <laughs> and what what's their do? function? Okay. I, I mean, I know they do the after prom party and stuff like that, and I think these are the people that are involved in it, but that that's that's more where I was going with it. Is it something that we're, we're required to staff, uh, and particularly when you have to start pulling out of districts trying to find people? Well, and it's also and possible that it could be converted to something more like the Tourism Advisory Committee or one of the others where it's not necessarily an appointment from, from the supervisors. It could be done by the department head or some other, that's unless, was, re, unless it's a requirement. That's, what that, that's where I was thinking. My, my, my judgment tells me it's not a requirement, that it may have come out because of interest. You know, you had, a, a, you had an adult council with youth, and then you had youth that were participating. I mean, they're a pretty active lot. I know, I know uh, Liz yeah. has a number of them. But having to go through the formal board appointment process, much like uh, Mr. White said, the Tourism Advisory Committee, that got kind of on its own weight because of having to get so many people reappointed all the time. It was really those that were interested in it. But I'll, I'll get some information in lieu of having Alicia come. I'll get it out to you all. Okay. I okay. consulted the bylaws when um, Susan first let me know of the question. I think it was created some years ago when the Office on Youth was originally established. I haven't talked to Tom about legal requirements, so we can definitely get an answer on that. But it was created to guide the activities of the Office on Youth. And that office has, you know, grown since that commission was created. Um, and right now it has 10 members that are required to be appointed. We have five district specific, um, one for each of the five districts, and then five at-large positions. And right now it does have a 50% vacancy. So there mm -hmm. could be some, re you know, restructuring opportunities if it's something that the board wanted to continue. Um, to answer the question on FAPT and CPMT, I did talk to Alicia about that. Um, those are both parent representative positions. One is required for CPMT, one is required for FAPT. They cannot be the same um, parent representative. It is strictly a volunteer position and it does require a number of hours, um, meetings during the day, um, and there, there is no compensation, no, um, you know, travel reimbursement or anything. And that has been one of the biggest issues with recruiting and retaining volunteers in that position. It, it does require time during the day, during work hours for a lot of parents. Um, and if you look at the makeup of the rest of those committees, FAPT and CPMT, they are staffed appointed to those positions that are required to do um, or provide the service on those committees as part of their job. So that's kind of been the contributing factor to the FAPT and CPMT vacancies, but they are important positions. We're just having a hard time getting someone to commit and stay. Are they required positions? They are yes. required. I think they are mandated. And, and the other positions are mandated as well. They're just you know, someone from the court, someone from social services, someone from office on youth, and they're compensated as part of their job. They're required to be there and do it, and they're having difficulty recruiting a volunteer to, to stay and commit to the position. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, how, how, how can you, how can there be a requirement that someone volunteer? Yeah. That, that just seems like a odd situation. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to go out and we'll check on this, but I think the way that these, there's a the way the FAP and the CPMT and the CSA, all that works is that you have the, the folks that are on each one of these levels, FAP makes recommendation on cases to the CPMT, that the CSA, the Children's Services Act says, here's who constitutes the FAP. Mm -hmm. And you've got somebody from the Community Services Board, somebody from Social Services, and, and on and on, and then a parent representative, and they don't say, I don't know if there's any sanctions if we don't have a parent representative. We do the best that we can to fill it. Well, apparently not because there are vacancies in both cases. Mm -hmm. No, we've had vacancies. We hope, well, we hope not anyway. Yeah. Well, that's another one. We need to we'll, have we'll, a little bit we'll of into that. information. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any, any other? Do you have your questions? No, no. That, okay, that, yeah, that good. Yeah, those are, <clears> we need to be sure that we follow up on those. So. Okay, calendar. We're to schedule a meeting. 
with Dogwood on the 18th at 6. Yes, sir. Uh, is that, what it, do we know at this point whether we have? We, we as we typically do, offered both December meeting dates to um, the Health Center Commission to see which one worked um, in coordination with their, their staff, and December 18th worked better for their schedule. We try to schedule this a little bit in advance so that we can guide the items that are on the agenda that night. Um, we do have public hearings planned for the first meeting in December, um, and you know this meeting does okay. prevent some of you know regular business from taking place. Um, so we have suggested at, at their request the December 18th meeting. Okay. All right. Any, any issues with that? Anybody? Okay. Closed meeting. Take a deep breath. Go into that uh, lawyer voice that you get on yeah. commercials. Whereas the Board of Supervisors of Orange County desires to discuss in closed meeting the following discussion or consideration of the assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, discipline, or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of the public body, specifically assistant fire chief and former 911 director. Discussion or consideration of the acquisition of real property for a public purpose where a discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of public body in, within the GWAP area. Discussion of plans to protect public safety as it relates to specific cybersecurity threats or vulnerabilities and briefings by staff members, legal counsel, and law enforcement, emergency service officials concerning actions taken to respond to such matters. Where discussion in open meeting would jeopardize the safety of any person or security of any facility, building, structure, information, technology system, or software system and specifically the county cybersecurity. Discussion and consideration of investment of public funds where competition or bargain is involved or if made public initially, the financial interest of the government unit would be adversely affected. Concerning the GWAP area and the Sheriff's Department and consultation with legal counsel employed or employed or retained by the public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel concerning working papers exemptions to FOIA. And whereas pursuant to sections 2.237.11A1, A3, A6, A8, and A19, of the Code of Virginia, such discussions may occur in closed meeting. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of Orange County does hereby authorize discussion of the four stated matters in closed meeting. Need that as a motion. So moved. <laughs> All in favor, <laughs> say aye. 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 We'll be back for breakfast tomorrow morning. Goodness. Good. I'm ready. Okay. Motion to recess. Do we have, uh, now we know what wants to do it. See, they, I made the motion to recess. I second it. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 It is unanimous. Okay. So we're back to our regular agenda. And it is almost 7 o'clock. Let me look. Do we have anyone signed up for public comment? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. We have two speakers signed up. Okay. First is Ash Laughlin. 7174 Rapid Ann Road. Okay. You can have the podium. Uh, good evening. I wanted to read a uh, an email that I sent to uh, Teal and to Alan Saunders of VDOT uh, and just to get this on everybody's radar. Um, I've been a resident or owned my house in uh, Rapid Ann since 2013. And since that time, I've seen an incredible uptick in traffic of all kinds, <clears throat> tractor trailer, uh, truck traffic from the quarry, and vehicular traffic coming through. And this letter's in response to uh, work that I've done with some of my neighbors during the last two years, extensive work trying to actually get something done to quell this, and nothing has occurred in that period of time. So if you don't mind, I'd like to read this and try to get it in within my three minutes. Um, uh, gentlemen, I'm writing to you to let you know of two serious accidents that have occurred within the past month involving industrial traffic in the town of Rapidan. Uh, I'm attaching photos of both wrecks in this email, and I have a couple of pictures of those if you want to see those, Bill, uh, as well as a list of the substantive measures that we've discussed in past meetings uh, that we, that's the folks of Rapidan, would like to see implemented as soon as possible. I'm attaching a petition 
that we have generated seeking to end industrial traffic on our roads in Rapid Am, that is 615. This petition, petition has 45 signatures of affected citizens in both counties, and I have that petition if anybody wants to see that or can see that. The first of these accidents occurred October 10th of this year and involved an 18-wheel truck hauling a full-size trailer. The truck was traveling at a high rate of speed and collided with the train overpass. Uh, the truck was four inches lower than the, uh, or higher than the trestle uh, right next to the fire station in Rapid Inn on 614. Now, granted, I understand this is in Culpeper County, but this is to illustrate uh, the, the massive problem that we're having in Rapid Inn, and this is just to illustrate two of the accidents that happened last month. Serious damage occurred to both the tractor trailer seen in the photograph as well as the tracks above. The truck struck the bridge overpass with enough force to move the tracks a number, a number of inches and railroad spikes were dislodged from this truck hitting it. Full-size tractor trailer. The second wreck occurred approximately one week ago and involves a fully loaded asphalt truck that destroyed a portion of the guardrail on the turn headed towards Rapid Inn River Bridge on 615. That is in the Culpeper site again, but it's coming around that corner, if you guys are familiar, coming towards Orange, and it just went straight into that um, uh, railing and then down the abutment. Um, uh, it went down the guardrail uh, towards Rapid Inn Road. The truck caused considerable damage to the guardrail and had to be towed out of that steep embankment, causing a lot of disruption. Both of these collisions illustrate the immediate need for both counties, and I stress this, both counties, to work together to help solve our traffic safety concerns in Rapid Inn. <coughs> Excuse my, langu my language, but we are damn lucky that there have been no fatalities related uh, to the tremendous uptick in industrial traffic as well as passenger traffic on our roads. Uh, the very our heads in the sand approach is not working for the property owners that this body serves, and no concrete steps have been implemented to date that are actually helping with this deadly serious problem. None. We are faced with industrial traffic on a scale that our rural roads were never intended to serve. Never. Those roads were built for just small vehicular or maybe the, the farmer traffic that we have, the tractors, etc. But not these loaded up trucks that are coming through here. Um, additionally, we have seen a huge increase in vehicular traffic that has occurred within the past two years, which coupled with industrial traffic has turned our quiet village into a high-speed throughway. All of these concerns have been brought to your attention multiple times by myself and many other concerned citizens. We have worked diligently to get authorities to pay attention to this ever-increasing problem. All the while, the onus has been placed on the citizenry, the citizenry, to fix this problem. And this is not the way government is supposed to work. Uh, you may be tired of hearing from me on this, but I cannot begin, you cannot begin to imagine how tired I am of having absolutely nothing done to protect the safety and serenity of our village. It is well past time that we hear from you, listing substantive solutions as well as a timetable for implementing these solutions. I say, what are we going to do to fix this problem? What are you going to do to fix this problem? Uh, I can show you, can I show pictures? Is that admissible? Yeah. We're passing around. This first picture is of a neighbor of mine took this picture of, of a double yellow line and uh, one of the gravel trucks passing her uh, and a tractor at the same time over a double yellow line. This behavior is, is just absolutely commonplace from the quarry drivers that come through there. Uh, always those trucks are over the double yellow line. Always they are speeding. And I say that because every time I'm behind one of them or they're behind me, uh, they are absolutely speeding. They are absolutely not going uh, in, in a safe manner. Uh, this second picture I'm sending or passing around is of the tractor trailer that struck the train tracks in Rapid Inn next to the uh, post office. If I have, to, do I have time left? In You're you're, you're beyond your grace period, but uh, I'll give you another minute or so here. Okay. I, I do have, but before, you, you've mentioned two roads, 614 and 615. Are those the two that are of primary concern? Or the, are there That's other? Right. Those it, are the two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, it, what has occurred is uh, 
Rapid Inn Road has become a, a feeder road for commuter traffic now, and it's an industrial corridor. Uh, the quarry is a massive user of this road, an abuser of this road. Uh, and then we also have Walmart trucks coming through now. We have Target trucks coming through, 18 wheelers coming through on this very rural scenic byway, by the way, which again was never intended for this kind of traffic. We are, are really just at, at end. We, we can't tell you enough of how upset we are about what has happened to our, our village. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with the quarry, but a lot of it just has to do with overuse of the road. Uh, there are a number of things we'd like to see. One of them is speed feedback signs in the village installed permanently. And that is the, the signs that tell you what your speed is. We know, and Alan Saunders from VDOT has told me specifically, that these signs work. I've been promised a million different things and nothing has come to fruition. One of those is we'll give you a temporary sign. We don't want a temporary sign. We want permanent signs in town that say, stop, slow down, you're going 50 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone. Uh, we want to have <clears throat> this road removed from ways that app on, on your smartphones and Google Maps, which is a doable thing. It's a, uh, sorry, if, I didn't mean if, to say If you say funny. so, sir, <laughs> if you say so. What, I, I don't. I, I, I believe that you can have them removed. Yeah, I've been promised this by Alan Saunders. And again, listen, I've been doing this for two years, and I've been getting the runaround since day one. I feel like I've been led around like a horse instead of somebody saying, hey, this is the way we need to do this. If you, if you really have a problem here, get your folks together, and let's figure out how to fix this. Nobody has said that. Everybody has given me another person to talk to, another, where, another place to go, another waste of my time, and it's been a considerable waste of time. And one of these things that is doable, we found, is ways can remove us from, and I don't mean to get angry, but I'm upset about this. It's my property now. It's, this is my son, my 14-year-old son walking down the street, and I'm worried he's going to get run over. My friends and neighbors, animals, and their children. It's a serious matter. Uh, I would like to see the whole speed limit lowered on Rapid Ann Road. Uh, take it down from, there's two mile stretch between Orange and Rapid Ann. That's 50 by 55 miles an hour. It's absurd to have a two mile stretch that's that speed, especially when trucks do not go the speed limit. They never go the 45 restriction that's on all the signs. They always go over that speed. And I'd like to see this the low visibility signage replaced. I'd also like to see the sheriff have a zero tolerance policy for uh, tickets in the town of Rapid Ann. Uh, we have a uh, $200 additional fine on our signs in the town, uh, and that is never enforced. Whenever those tickets come up before the judge, they throw them out. So why have it on there? And the whole point of having it is so that we will get people to obey the speed limit, which is 25 miles an hour in the town. And that's something we could do immediately. And that doesn't cost anything. It actually makes you money. Uh, and then in the end, uh, we really need to see mechanical means in town to slow traffic down. And the proven way to do that is speed tables. And we've talked with Alan Saunders, and that's one of his recommendations, which is a ramp. You may be familiar with it. It's a ramp up, over and down, which will and slow these trucks down, slow this traffic down so that they're not racing through town any longer. And I think these are all reasonable concerns. We're talking about rapid and our section in orange is on the National Register of Historic Places. It is a historic village. It is not, it, it's a scenic byway, one of only two in Orange, the whole county of Orange. This should be a cherished spot, not something used just so people can use it to speed through here to go to work or to, for one quarry, effectively, to abuse ad infinitum. And on that subject, that quarry well, uh, yeah, has I'm going to have to ask you to, to wrap it up. You're, you're, okay, that, I appreciate yeah. that. The quarry does have an alternate route, though, that, that they specified to folks in Orange a number of years ago that they would utilize 6, 649, and they've decided not to utilize that. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, next speaker is Cindy Pipes-Jones, or I'm sorry, Johnson, <laughs> resident hey, of the village of Rapidine as well. Good evening. I'm going to try and just pull up an article. 
real quick on my keep this open. Um, thank you for having me. Let me speak. My name is Cindy Pipes Johnson, and I live and own a home in the village of Rapidan. My mother was born in, on Piedmont Farm in Rapidan. My grandparents are from Rapidan. I grew up there. I love Rapidan. I'm here tonight as part of the Citizens for a Safer 615. I am concerned uh, for the safety of everyone who lives and drives on 615. From the town of Orange, leaving Orange, the five or six miles to Rapidan, through Rapidan into Culpeper County, 615 continues and gets very narrow, um, and then it, it runs into 522 as, as you're going to Culpeper. Um, I'm greatly concerned about my neighbor's safety, the safety of family, friends, and children who live in Rapidan. Rapidan has an active social network. We are walking to our neighbor's houses. We are having picnics. We are going down to the river. We walk to the post office. We walk to church. Um, there are at least two school bus stops in Rapidan, both at the bottom. Uh, one is at, towards the top of the first hill that's very steep, and the other is at the bottom. Um, we do all this walking on the side of the road. We're walking our dogs, we're walking with our family, and there are no sidewalks in Rapidan. You're on the side of the road. Um, I'm concerned that 615, while once was a very quiet and rural road, things have changed. It's still, uh, as the, uh, the speaker before me said, uh, it's a Virginia byway. And now it is a very busy road. It's used daily by cars, by track farm equipment, tractors, and heavy gravel trucks. And now we have documentation that trucks are coming from the Culpeper side, Target and Walmart, 24 hours a day. We have documentation that they are coming through. Um, I'm out cutting my grass one day, and up through 25 mile per hour up a hill, here comes an 18 wheel Target truck. They have no business on that road. Um, several people over the past few years uh, have spoken and sent emails to the Board of Supervisors, to VDOT, to Orange County Transportation, uh, the Police Department, and other agencies regarding these concerns. Uh, one outcome of this was that we did have the speed limit reduced from 35 to 25 in Rapidan. Uh, there has been uh, some signs put up temporarily that let you know when, when you're going too fast, and those are not there right now, to my knowledge. Um, most recently, there was a large gravel truck that wrecked on this very sharp curve as you go from Culpeper over the bridge towards Orange. Um, it had to be pulled out. It went down over the bank a little bit there. Um, you've seen pictures. And in the middle of the night, about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, an 18-wheeler coming from, must have been coming from Route 15 through 614, which T-bones in the little downtown part of Rapidan into 615, um, went underneath an overpass uh, and tore up the CXX railroad track there. Um, it caused a lot of, of of problems, you know, rescue had to come out in the middle of the night, police that could be doing something else had to take care of somebody who did not belong in that road. Um, if you would like to see a picture of a fully loaded gravel truck passing a car and a tractor over a yellow double line, then I encourage you to go to our Facebook page, which is Citizens for a Safer 615. Those big trucks have a right to do their business. I understand that. My father was a businessman. I've been working since I was 12. Don't want to put anybody out of work, but I don't want anybody to get hurt in our quiet, historic little village of Rapidan. Um, I'm asking that the Board of Supervisors take immediate action and send a request to the Commonwealth Transportation Board to do a study which would include alternate routes, traffic counts, truck traffic counts, crash sites, and also to check on the, um, there's a standard for the curb in the road that the, this um, Commonwealth Transportation Board can check. 
Um, if you need to know those guidelines, here's a copy of it. I, may I give that to you to pass around on how that process works? Um, but we would need the Board of Supervisors to all agree that this study would be maybe the first step to get some data, some actual data, so we can get something done in Rapidan. Time is of the essence. No more talk. It's time for action. All these concerns have been brought up to the Board of Supervisors before. The safety of our village and all those who live on Route, all of those who live everywhere on Route 16, Route uh, 615, is in jeopardy. I am encouraged to know that the County of Albemarle's Board of Supervisors did have a study done by the, the board, and they are making changes now. They have listened to their constituents and to the citizens of Albemarle County, and I ask you all please to take this very seriously and please take action quickly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Jobs. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? No, sir. Okay. We'll close the public comment period. And I guess we're going to thank you. Yeah. Um, we, we need to return to our closed meeting. A motion to resume the closed We need meeting. a motion to do that. So moved. Second. Okay. Thank you. Members of the board, to the best of your knowledge, were the only matters discussed in the closed meeting, public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements, and that only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered in the closed meeting. Mr. Frame. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Crozier. Aye. Mr. Goodwin. Aye. And Mr. White. Aye. Move we adjourn. Second. Oh, you are good. Yeah. Aye. It's like sitting in a traffic light waiting.